Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at De Broglie wavelength in relation to wave particle duality. So let's get started. So a particular part of wave particle duality in the Advanced Higher Physics course is De Broglie wavelength. It says in 1923, Louis De Broglie, a French physicist, suggested that since light had particle-like properties, then maybe nature was dualistic and particles had wave-like properties as well. From relativity theory, we can say that the energy of a particle with a zero rest mass, such as a photon, is given by E equals PC, where P is momentum and C is the speed of light. And since E equals HF for photons, then we can write PC is equal to HF. So if we rearrange this to get C over F, then we get C divided by F is equal to H over P. And since the wave equation V equals F lambda, or since we're using photons, we can use the speed of light C equals F lambda, then we have that C over F is equal to lambda. And this means that if we replace C over F with lambda here, then we have lambda equals H over P, where lambda is the de Broglie wavelength of the electron measured in meters, H is Planck's constant, which is on the data sheet, and P is the momentum of the electron measured in kilogram meters per second. So therefore we're thinking about electrons as not only having a momentum, but also having their own wavelength, which sounds pretty weird, but that's because we're thinking about wave particle duality here. A quick note is that when performing calculations with this relationship, it is often useful to rewrite momentum as m times v rather than p, i.e. lambda equals h over p is equal to h over mv. So we're just expanding the momentum term to give us mass times velocity, where m is the electron's mass and v its speed. And this is because typically you'll be given the electron's speed rather than just its overall momentum. So this form of the relationship can definitely help you. And thus we've seen that the wave and particle are related through its momentum. And we'll now go on and see how de Broglie was able to explain the stability of orbits in the Bohr model of the atom. So it says by associating a wavelength with the orbiting electron, de Broglie was able to explain the stability of orbits in the Bohr atom. When an electron is in one of the allowed orbits or stationary states, it behaves as if it is a standing wave, not a particle experiencing centripetal acceleration. So instead of thinking about the electrons as experiencing a centripetal acceleration, which would cause them to spiral in towards the nucleus of an atom, we can consider an electron to behave like a standing wave instead, rather than a particle. And thus, the electron does not emit electromagnetic radiation. The radius of the orbit must be such that it allows for a standing wave to be created, hence it is quantized. So if you look here, we've got a diagram of an atom as proposed by de Broglie, where we've got a nucleus in the center, and then we've got electrons which are appearing as standing waves. And you'll notice that between any two crests, for example, we have one wavelength. And de Broglie proposed that the orbits of electrons in atoms would have a certain number of wavelengths, i.e. a quantized number of wavelengths. So here you can see just how many standing waves can fit into this orbit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we take one wavelength to mean one wave, then we have eight waves fitting within this orbit. And therefore, de Broglie concluded that when we think about electrons as standing waves rather than as particles, then that can explain why electrons in these orbits can remain stable rather than being unstable and spiraling in towards the nucleus. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.